Hello, my fellow handicappers. This is Weekend Handicapper from WeekendHandicapper.com. In this video, I'm going to give you my pace analysis of the 2021 Kentucky Derby. Pace handicapping, the, probably my favorite part of handicapping, the thing I enjoy doing the most, trying to predict the race shape, who's going to be in front, who's going to be closing in, and there's no better race to get right in predicting how the race is going to be run in pace handicapping than the Kentucky Derby. All eyeballs are on the world of racing, uh, and it's just so much fun. To, a big field of 20 like this, trying to figure out those little nuances and how those nuances can translate into hopefully winning some money on the Kentucky Derby. So the Kentucky Derby is Saturday, May 1st. Race number 12, mile and a quarter on the dirt track at Churchill Downs. You're going to be running for the Roses around 6.57 Eastern Standard Time. So in this video, let's look at the pace analysis on what horses are going to be out front, uh, predicting, leaving the gate, going to the lead, who's going to be setting off the pace, who's going to be pressing the pace, and who's going to be closing in. Now, it doesn't happen like that all the time. Like it looks like it happens on paper, but I think on average, whatever you see, if you can get good at pace handicapping and interpreting running lines and running styles that you see in the past performances or a track program, more often than not, it's going to play out what you think. Doesn't mean the horses that you bet is going to win, you're going to cash a ticket, but at least you had a sense for the most part, on how the race is going to be uh, ran. So let's look at this 20-horse field, and let's see if we can predict how the race is going to be run. We've had a lot of defections, which means a lot of horses skip the Kentucky Derby either because of health issues or their connections decide to uh, sit out the Kentucky Derby and, and target their horses for different races. Uh, so there's been a lot of flip-flopping, and who knows, after I record this video, could be some more flip-flopping and some different uh, uh, defections or horses that uh, just can't run in the Kentucky Derby. And that means, and that, that seriously uh, can hinder pace analysis. Case in point, uh, Cotto River, Cato River, for trainer Brad Cox, scratched. That horse had a lot to say on the front end. It was going to be out front. Well, with it being out, does that mean there's less pace up front? You would think so. Or will the jockeys realize that there's less pace up front and they'll, what we didn't think would happen on paper, those jockeys are going to take matters in their own hands and try to get out front. Therefore, more horses on the front end than what we thought on paper. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's look at the early pace first. Number eight, Medina Spirit, Bob Baffert's horse. 15 to one is probably going to be out there on the front end uh, now that Cotto River is scratched. Number 10, Midnight Bourbon, a good consistent horse that if you watch my other videos about my derby picks and uh, whew, it's a consistent horse. So I would use this in your in your Zactus tries and supers and who knows, even win bet if you wanted to. But those two horse should be out on the lead. You're gonna have Rock Your World, the number 15 horse being right there too, or a little, maybe a little bit off the pace. Uh, you have these horses that's gonna sit off the front end. Horses like Hot Rod Charlie, Brooklyn Strong. You got a, a bunch of horses whose preferred running stall is gonna press right off the front end. So you got your early pace setters. More than likely, that's going to be Medina or Medina Spirit, the eight horse, and number 10, Midnight Bourbon. You got horses like Like the King, Brooklyn Strong, Sane Hood, Hot Rod Charlie, Dynamic One, which is becoming more and more an intriguing long shot by the day as the week goes along. Helium, uh, which is a Mark Cassie horse. They won the Tampa Bay Derby. The, the favorite essential quality should be sitting off that. Uh, like I said, Rock Your World, highly motivated, could be sitting on a big race for Chad Brown. Uh, Super Stock and number 19, Soup and Sandwich. Soup and Sandwich should be up there uh, very close to the lead. So you got Medina Spirit, Midnight Bourbon, and you got all those horses pretty much, but definitely Soup and Sandwich 
Hot Rod Charlie should be up there close. Uh, and those other horses that I mentioned. Now, does that help us out at all? Not really. More than likely, your winner is going to come from that group of horses that I just named. Maybe not on the front end, but who knows? We could have a repeat of what Authentic did last year in the 2020 Kentucky Derby. Come and get me. Bob Baffert might employ the same tactics with Medina Spirit, uh, or Medina Spirit, however you say it. Then you have horses on paper. <laughs> Remember, the Kentucky Derby is a chaotic race, and it, it's traffic trouble galore. So, but at least on paper, you have another group of horses that's going to be a little bit farther back, pre pressing even farther back. Maybe not near the front, but not a closer either. And that's horses like the number one known agenda, which is drawing the one hole, which that's going to, in terms of race riding and decision making, will this horse have to go earlier to get out of that one hole position? on the rail or does it just say hey you all go on i'm gonna chill back here a little bit and then make my run later on but number one known agenda is a presser number seven mandaloon who i very intrigued by at 15 to 1 should be off the pace of good ways and making that late run that late kick number 13 hidden stash number 16 king's fury and number 20 bourbonic who showed that it could close in when it won the Wood Memorial at a huge price. And then you have a couple of deep closers. Deep closers such as the number four, Keep Me In Mind, and the number six, Obesos. Closers typically are, unless you're Zenyatta, closers are always bombs. Really high price horses, especially in fields like the Kentucky Derby. So those two horses, the four and six, is... Uh, going to be really good prices and closing in late. Now, that's the horse's running style, but that doesn't mean that's what the jockeys are going to do, and that doesn't mean that's how their race is going to be run. Again, the Kentucky Derby is full of chaos historically. Horses bumping into each other, horses getting blocked, jockeys that have plenty of horse underneath of them, but they can't go anywhere because all the traffic, the 20-horse field thing, it's, it's like a crapshoot, honestly. But according to paper, you don't have much early speed now. That Cotto River's out. The only, only way you're going to get more horses up front other than the 8 and the 10 horse is the jockeys and their connections. The trainers say, hey, we need, there's not much speed in here. We need to get going. And therefore, you might, not, you might see more horses going towards an early lead. Horses like Hot Rod Charlie, Soup and Sandwich. Uh, that will be up there with Midnight Bourbon and Medina Spirit. Uh, it's tough. The Kentucky Derby is tough. So what I want you all to think about is will the early speed prevail? Usually the horses that win the Kentucky Derby are the horses that are just off the early speed. And that's why I've named, what, 10 horses that – probably will be in that position so that doesn't really help our cause any that's why you got to have other handicapping factors and angles uh, to help you come up with the winner but historically it's those horses that could sit right off the early speed in this case again it's the number eight and number ten that are going to be out front at least on paper then right behind that is the, the, all these horses so be thinking about that doesn't mean that's where the winner is going to come from but Historically, that's where you want to be. And then the next group are your, your pressers that can set a little bit further back. So you got to think to yourself, how fast is this pace going to be? Is it going to be not fast at all? Then you give the advantage to those horses that are on the front end or just off the front end. If you think it's going to be pretty fast because more horses than what's on paper are going to go more towards the front end early, then give the preference to the horses that are sitting off the pace a good while. Again, that's known agenda, Mandaloon, Hidden Stash, King Fury, and Bourbonic. If you think the race is going to be really fast, 
then consider those long shot closers, which is, keep me in mind, the number four horse and number six, Obesos. They're going to be closing in big time. They need a lot of pace to run at. So in order to have a lot of pace to run at, you got to predict that the early fractions, the early pace is going to be hot. Going to be a lot of horses vying for the early lead. That's why you get those big bomb closers. Now, with, when you play closers, a lot of luck's got to go your way too in a 20 horse field. You got to dodge all these tiring horses, dodge all that traffic, and hopefully you can time the, your run, your late kick just right so you can hit the wire in, in time. So that's how I'm seeing the early or the Kentucky Derby pace for the 2021 Kentucky Derby. Something tells me there won't be much pace up front. And if that happens, then you got to give a serious look to eight Medina Spirit, Midnight Bourbon. But that doesn't mean those horses are going to win. But you might want to use them in your exotics and your exactas and things. Uh, if you watch my other videos, you'll see that I'm, the win bet wise is on number 14 Central Quality and the number seven Mandaloon. So I have to hope that there's at least some pace to run at and those horses up front will wear each other out for so my horses of preference will have something to run at and uh, can chase them down. But that's how I see the Kentucky Derby pace analysis and the way the, hor the horse race is going to be run. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, how you think the race is going to be run. Uh, what kind of pace are we looking at? Is it a fast pace, or slow pace, where those on the front end have an advantage or will the closers have more advantage because there's going to be a lot of pace or those in mid pack. That's what makes it so much fun. That's why I love handicapping. One of the main reasons I love handicapping is trying to figure out the pace and the running styles and the whole race shape. It's a fascinating thing to me. It's not bulletproof. Uh, you can be just as wrong with your pace analysis as you could be just as wrong about anything else in horse racing but to me that's a fun creative way to play the races and it could be a very profitable one if you are right and you pick the right horses uh, to to finish the race in the manner that you saw it i love it can't get enough of pace handicapping all right till next time this is a weekend handicapper happy handicapping smart waging <laughs>